Hallelujah. Praise God and welcome to another episode of Rock of Ages. Today, we will be talking about building ourselves. I think it's really important to talk about this topic of building ourselves because if you look at the word clearly, the word itself defines a process. Building is a process. And in our Christian lives, many times we feel discouraged because many times we don't see the result. But as long as we understand, as long as we understand and believe that we are in the process, we will always be encouraged. Today, our key verse is going to be from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 24. So everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. We've, been, we've all heard this Bible verse many times. Those who hear the word and act on them will be like the wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rock being the foundation, Jesus Christ. Many times when we read about this Bible verse, when this Bible verse is taught, we talk about Jesus Christ being the foundation, being the foundation on, what, on which we build. But what, what, we, what is less spoken about is that there is a process of building the house in this verse. The foundation is Christ, but the process is still the building. These days in our farm, we are also uh, doing a lot of construction. We are building a, a farmhouse and God has taught me a lot about building myself spiritually as I am building a physical and a real house. You see, many times, what we used to do before was we used to delegate the building of our house to others. We were never present here in Aizol, Mizoram. We were always out of station and we had to delegate the work to people who are here to oversee the work. And every time we told them what we wanted, the reality was never the same as our expectation. We always gave them pictures of what we wanted. We told them what we wanted. But what we received at the end, whenever we came back, we saw the construction, it was never up to our expectation. So I want to talk a little bit about building. See, building a house is a process. It is a process and not a one-time thing. In the beginning, when the foundations are laid, you will see nothing. There is no vision. And as you are building the beams and the pillars and certain walls are being erected, it will feel incomplete and in the process you will feel lost. A few, a few months back, we were making a terrace in our farm. <clears throat> And in the beginning, I had this vision that we will make three terraces. We will make three beautiful terraces and we will uh, put grass and lawn there. But as the JCB, as the JCB started digging, it was complete chaos. There was land, there was uh, mud everywhere. There was uh, sand everywhere. And I lost the vision that I had because I could not picture it anymore. And that discouraged me for a little while. I started thinking, is what we are doing the right thing? Will it be like how I imagined it? But even among that dirt, we kept working through, we kept working through, we kept digging, we kept clearing out. And slowly, slowly, the vision started to be visible again. And by the end of it, we had three beautiful terraces. So what I want to state first thing is that building is a process you have a vision and then you enter into a process and in that process you might feel lost you might feel there's no point of me keeping keep going on but if you stay true to your vision at the end your vision will come true the second point is that we are not the architects of our lives we have to understand that just like how God created everything for a purpose we have been created for a purpose and that purpose has been given to us by God. 
He has made a plan for us. And our duty, our duty is to try and live in such a manner that that plan can be fulfilled so that we can live a better life and a more fulfilled life. A better life than what we would envision for ourselves. Because God, He knows the best for us. And since we do not know the plan of our own building structure, see, God is the architect. He is the engineer. And He has the plan. What we have to do is, we just have to faithfully follow His blueprint that He has already given us in the Bible. He has given us principles to follow. He has given us ways to listen to Him. He has given us ways to live our life. And as long as we stay to, true to the Word of God, it will lead us to the path in which God has made for us. The problem is, many times we consult architects and engineers to design our house. And in the process of designing our house, in the process of constructing our house, we start having our own ideas here and there. The diagram, the engineer says, we'll make a balcony here. But we say that, okay, no, let's not put a balcony here, but we'll put a balcony there. And then we'll go our own way. But then later on, we realize that as we are building that balcony, our single idea, that one idea of ours does not fit into the bigger picture of what the architect was planning. The architect would have had a bigger plan. But when we planned on making that one small change, it affected the whole structure of what the architect was trying to do. And in the process, we have to demolish that, demolish that one idea that we have. And we have to restart again for what the architect was trying to build. In the same way, God has a plan for each and every one of us. And while we are building ourselves in Christ, we cannot try and put in our own ways in between. Because when we try to live our own life the way we want, while trying to live the life that God wants, these two cannot go hand in hand. And the third is that we cannot depend on others to build our house for us. Others can guide us, they can advise us, but they can never be the ones to build our own house. Just as I said that we were delegating the building and the construction of our house to other people, it was never up to our expectation because they never really knew what we wanted. They never re really understood what we desired. So recently when I started getting involved in the construction of our house in our farm, I had to study. I had to study about construction. I had to study about pillars and beams, about how to mix the cement, about the rate of cement, and all those other things that were related with construction. You see, once you start taking over the building of your own house, of your own spiritual self, you have to start learning the Word of God for yourself. You cannot keep depending on others' sermon. You cannot keep depending on others' prayers. You cannot keep depending on others' testimony. You have to start working on yourself to build your own house. In Acts chapter 20, verse 32, it says, So now, brethren, I commend you. I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you. Not everything in the Bible is meant to build you up. The law of Moses is not meant to build you up. The prophecies of the prophets is not meant to build you up. The creation of the world in Genesis is not supposed to build you up. The Bible clearly says that the word of His grace the word of His grace which is able to build you up. We are to be built up in the grace of God. And it says here in John 1st chapter 1 verse 17, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. When we read the Bible and when we are trying to build ourselves, 
Simple knowledge of the law is not enough. Simple knowledge of the different doctrine and the philosophies of the Bible and the history of Israel and the histories of all the different stories is not enough. Those, those are what we would call the worldly knowledge. But the knowledge that we need to have about the Bible to have growth in us is the knowledge of Jesus Christ who came with truth, who came with grace and truth. You see, there's a very important difference here. There's a reason why the Bible says that Jesus came in grace and truth. You see, without grace and if there was only truth, life would be very hard to live. It would be very dangerous. People would be very radically about only the truth that we are not supposed to do this. We are not supposed to do that. You are not good enough. And that is the truth. None of us are good enough. But before grace came the truth, before truth came grace. Grace says that even though you are not enough, you are already forgiven and accepted. You see, what we have to grow in is not the prophecies and not the history of the Bible, but what we have to grow in is the grace of Jesus Christ. It says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Father, Jesus our Lord. Grace be multiplied in the knowledge, not in the knowledge of the Bible, simply in the Bible, but in the knowledge of Christ. And if we look at the Bible, the Bible has been divided into many categories. We have the law, then we have the prophecies. And then when we come to the new chapter, when we come to the New Testament, we have the Gospel. The Gospel is where we build ourselves, where we imitate the likeness of Christ, where we learn about Him and we try to be like Him. And when we try to be like Him, the grace that He had becomes our grace. And that grace is what helps us to grow Many times, we listen to other people, we listen to their sermon and we just keep listening and listening without actually practicing it on our own, without actually searching for Christ and trying to be near Him on our own. And that's very dangerous because what that leads to is that leads to a religious person and not to a spiritual person. And as we know, Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship with Christ and unless and until we become close to Christ we can never be real true Christians it says here in John chapter 4 verse 42 John chapter 4 is when the Samaritan when Jesus revealed himself to, to the Samaritan woman near the well he told her about her life and she was filled with joy and she went back to her city she went back to her village and she told every about everybody about this man named Jesus who had told her about her life and in verse 42 it says they said to the woman now we believe not because of what you said for we ourselves have heard him and we know that this indeed is the Christ the savior of the world these people believed not because of what the Samaritan woman told them, but because they experienced Christ themselves. Once when this lady, this Samaritan woman told them about Christ, they went to him. They went to him and they heard what he had to say. They heard his teachings and they met him personally. And once they met him personally, they, their lives were changed. Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. And if we want to build ourselves, our, our spiritual lives, we must have a relationship with Christ. And that relationship with Christ, it begins with the knowledge of the Gospels, the knowledge of Christ in the Gospels. You see, it said in 2 Peter, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God. And in John 14, 
7 it says if you need Jesus said if you really knew me you would know the father so it means to know Jesus is to know God God Jesus and God they have the same characteristics so if we know Christ if you know the gospel the characteristics of Christ his compassion his forgiveness his grace his teachings then we grow then we grow in our spiritual lives in Colossians chapter 3 verse 10 it says do not lie to one another since you have put the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowing according to the image of him who created him we have been made new we have been renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created us you see I'm sure most of us many of us we watch movies and uh, if you see how the actors how the actors uh, train themselves for a particular role especially in biopics the actors they do not just learn acting what the actors do is they learn the character who they are supposed to act for example if there was a movie about uh, a biopic about Stephen Hawking the actor he would not just be by himself he would not just read a book about Stephen Hawking but he would go meet Stephen Hawking study him get to know him get to know his personality get to know the way he talks get to know his psychology so that he can put that knowledge into acting in that same way what we have to do is we when, when we are supposed to represent Christ in this world we have to be near him not just read about him but be near him spiritually pray to him more spend time with him in the spirit pray in tongues you know spend our quiet time with him it is not just about reading the Bible it is about spending time with Christ and when we do that when we do that we start building ourselves spiritually you know just like growth, growth spiritual growth there are two aspects to spiritual growth one is knowledge and one is action if that knowledge is not if the knowledge that you have is not put into action it has no meaning for example for example speaking is not just simply moving your mouth and your lips speaking is not simply just moving your mouth and your lips speaking is the ability to put forth what is in your mind to arrange them in a proper manner to arrange them in words and sentences and using your mouth and lips you speak out what is in your mind just in that same way spiritual growth is not just having knowledge of what the Bible says it's not just about the knowledge of who Christ is but it is about putting that knowledge into practice in reality in having a real relationship not just a knowledge relationship in the same way shaking a hand any action that we do is not just a simple action you know it is the ability to put forth what is in your mind into action simply thinking that shaking a hand is moving your physical arms around is not shaking a hand but you have a mental picture of shaking somebody's hand you have a mental picture of putting your hand forward and that is put forward out in action through your actual physical hand in the same way grace grace is not just the knowledge of God's goodness it is not just the knowledge of God's love it is not just the knowledge of God's forgiveness but it is the outward action that you portray to other people that shows that you have grace and when you show this that is when spiritual growth takes place you know building yourself in Christ is not just reading the Bible but when you start practicing what you learn will you start growing in the spirit when you instead of depending on others to pray for you 
and when you start praying for yourself is when you will start growing in the spirit many people what we keep telling others is that please pray for me please pray for me I have a prayer request what we have to do is we have to learn to start praying for ourselves we have to start finding revelation in our own life instead of depending on others testimony to make us strong we have to introspect in our own lives we have to introspect in our own lives and we have to see the work of work that God has already done in our lives and we have to use that to strengthen ourselves see when David was in that cave all alone when his generals had when his generals had left him when his whole army had deserted him he had no one he had nobody's testimony he had nobody to encourage him all he could do was he had God and he encouraged himself in God my friends if you want a spiritual growth we have to stop looking at others we have to stop looking at others testimony others prayers others preaching and others sermon and we have to start reading for ourselves we have to start finding our own testimonies we have to start finding Christ for ourselves and once we do that we will start having spiritual growth today friends I hope that today's message blesses you and then I hope that today will be a start that you will start taking actions on your own and instead of depending others to build for you you will start building for yourself and building for yourself means accumulating the knowledge for yourself you have to read your Bible you have to get to know Jesus you have to start praying a, a Christian without a prayer prayer life is no Christian at all a Christian who does not read the Bible is not a Christian at all the point of being a Christian is having a relationship with Christ and if you do not know who Christ is and after knowing who Christ is if you do not have a relationship with Christ then there is no point of being a Christian because the beauty of Christianity lies in the relationship that we have with Christ our one hope our salvation I hope today's message blesses you and thank you for watching have a blessed weekend